to Stampscaping 101. While I had my autumn types of uh, Aspen imagery out, I thought I would try something here that I haven't done with them yet. It's, you know, kind of doing the same type of thing, but it's just a little bit of a tweak on it. I like the, uh, um, kind of the, uh, the ground's eye view of trees, kind of, you know, like you're laying on your back looking up at the uh, sky. Uh, type of imagery, and I just haven't done it with this. It's just instead of stamping things um, kind of vertical like this, you um, kind of uh, figure out some kind of vanishing point or common vanishing point, and you point all of your um, trees at that in kind of this um, circular type of pattern. All right, before I start that, I need to, uh, I'm going to give the um, a uh, tree is a multi-tonal look. Okay, now these are the Marvy um, 1500 series pens. You might be able to do that with the Plume uh, die-based uh, double-head pens. I'm not sure. Maybe if you take out the thick tip, but these um, inks all come with the uh, um, corresponding, not all of them, but a lot of them, oops, come with the corresponding <laughs> color for their pads. They only have the... Uh, they don't have the dedicated pads these days, but they have the uh, um, blank pads that you can add something to. But you just take this out if you don't know, and you just add some ink right in there. I wouldn't fill up the whole thing, you know what I mean? That would be like a brand new pad, and I don't know, a little bit goes quite a long ways. And then you just put that right back in there. I would put, you know, whatever side you use to put that side in. And just, you know, stir your inks that way. It'll take a little bit of time for, you know, whatever capillary action to uh, uh, absorb that ink and to, or to feed it, whatever. Um, but your pens will last quite a long time that way. Okay, so I'm going to use some light green ink. Let's do two at the same time here, okay? Try to expedite this process here. I'm going to be doing a four and a quarter by five and a half sheet right here. Now, my photo prints are four by six, you know. Ideally, I'd have a four by six of this, so I'm just going to have to merge this like that, and I'll just trim accordingly. Okay, so um, that was the green on there. Now let's add some yellow to these. Okay, it's going to be kind of a, you know, not full fall uh, foliage type of uh, scenario here. And it just, we needed that green in there because we need a little bit of a, oh, a change of value. The yellow is just, you know, it's going to be one of the lighter colors that you can use. And um, just if you have a little bit of variation, I think it'll help things out. In fact, I, I might have taken it too light, I'm not sure. Um, with vellum, of course, we're, you know, it's having to, um, it's going to be transparent, so it's going to be having to stand up against some of the, um, the blue tones around here. I don't know, maybe I should really go with um, kind of a lighter one than that around the perimeter. I don't know. And now this green might be a little bit too much, but you just kind of experiment around with this, um, like so, okay? And, you know, we're going to be using the uh, acrylic pens, so this is, this is just kind of the foundation. Okay, now these too, because I'm not using the whole um, stamp. I mean, I probably don't need to color down that low, but let's just kind of figure it out here. We're just figuring these things out on the fly here. Okay, now one of the things that I am considering is I have this quote stamp here, so I want to leave a little bit of space for that quote. So, okay, here's how you do it. I'm going to, let's see, pick out a vanishing point. Let's say it's right about right here. Okay, we'll have it kind of centralized. So I'm aiming all of my impressions, my asp quick and aspen impressions, at that vanishing point. So somewhere along like that. 
know if I can get a second impression out of this. Maybe, maybe we can. Eh, I'm not going to chance it. Let's just go with the first impressions. Okay, so vanishing points roughly right here. I'm going for um, a couple different um, sizes here just to give a little bit of variation. Okay. Now this isn't, it'd be easier if this is one stamp, and I could do it with one um, tree and just color one of them, but I don't know. This is just going to take less time. Okay, let's see. I'm looking at the photograph now, too. Maybe right here I can go with another one because it's going to be in the lighter area of the cloud. Okay, see that? And the vellum's kind of, it's not as porous as, you know, a cardstock or something like that. Okay, so, okay, <laughs> I inked up that part. This part down here, I didn't ink up enough um, because I went, you know, I used most of an impression down here. So you, what you do is just do is layer it. Okay, so I'm just going with the green here and we'll put another like right on top of that. Like about like so. Okay, and just kind of fill that in. All right, so uh, let's do another um, one over here. Let's go for the larger one again. Okay, something like this. Okay, yeah. This is a kind of, this is a really fun way of coloring your stamps, too. Um, just the variation that you get, and you're really taking advantage of the dye-based inks. Kind of that watercolory look of, uh, you know, that they're um, so great at achieving. This is one way to really kind of, um, kind of push that aspect of them, or that potential of them, okay? And, you know, when you're doing it this way, as you can imagine, things tend to be, um, it's predictable, I guess, to some degree, but in other ways, it's, you really don't know what you're going to get. Like, I didn't know it was, going, was you know, wasn't going to get very much yellow in that impression or something like that, but... Um, it does give you that variation and, you know, variation in artwork, you know, it can really add to that um, kind of surface variety, which is uh, something that, you know, is, we is sought after, you know, in terms of the creation of um, your artwork. All right, let's go for one more. Let's just go for green, okay? And let's overlap it a little bit. Where does my dot? <laughs> my vanishing point. Okay, see that? So I'm going to angle that a little bit more and have this kind of going straight towards it. Kind of. It's this one right here, it's not just following this because these two kind of flare out, so it's I kind of have my uh my center line. Um kind of down the middle of those two. Okay, so that looks like so. All right. We'll go for a little bit of a textural difference too with the use of, um, I think my leafless. Let's go for a fresh piece of paper so you can see the vellum's always interesting to work with. All right, so that's going to look like this, or we can kind of choose a point in here. That looks pretty good like that. Or we can go for a little bit more on this side like that. I don't know. We, I have a lot of um, photographs on um, the Flickr, my Flickr album, Flickr.com. And there's a lot of these different photographs that are free for download. Okay. Actually, it almost pretty interesting right there, doesn't it? Or here's one with a little bit more contrast. Like that. Hmm. That's interesting. Oops, I need to be careful. I'm really touching this, and this is really wet right now. Okay. 
Okay, I'm leaning on this one right here. What do you think? Um, all right, I got some uh, fingerprints there in that ink. And what I'll do is I'll just scratch that off later on. Okay, um, let's see. Let's go for that additional leafless limb stamp right here. Okay. Now this one's going to be more important that we aim it at that uh, vanishing point. So maybe I'll get a little bit more definitive with my vanishing point location with this one. All right, now let's just go for some contrast. Um, I, don't, I don't think I've used this one before with uh, my Aspens, but I might have. Okay, so as far as like a um, vanishing point, let's go with right about here. Okay, I'm just using a little gel pen. And I have a little, tiny little dot right there. And I'm going to use my Brilliance Graphite Black. I think I'm going to heat set this one, okay? Okay. All right. And we'll put this in front, you know, of some of these. I won't, I won't go with... Okay, I, I need my quote. My quote will be... I need to work around that idea or the location for the quote. But let's see, the quote is going to be roughly, let's go with it right here. Okay, so I'm aiming this directly at that dot. Now this is a Brilliance um, Graphite Black. The Brilliance inks will dry on the vellum, no problem, okay? Okay, we'll kind of offset that a little bit. Um, one of the things that, um, I don't know, it seems like we all have to kind of um, be mindful of it in terms of kind of this monotony, um, in terms of uh, image placement. We all have to, we all want to kind of place things completely even. I, I do too, and I, I find that I have to kind of work against that. So what I like, I purposely try to group things, um, and then I'll have one kind of off on its own, so these two are together. Maybe I'll go for a, another one right here. See this? It just, it kind of creates a little bit more variety. And then we can have another one. See, I'm doing it at different um, lengths into the, uh, the piece as well, okay? See that right there? And I don't know, you can go for another one right here. Let's go for a really small one. But that kind of matches up too much, so let's go with two of them right next to each other. So it just doesn't look so symmetrical. And there you have kind of this really strong vanishing point type of um, scenario here as far as our perspective goes. Okay. And that. I don't know, it, it lends itself to um, ah, <laughs> its own, uh, uh, th there's a different spirit to it, don't you think? Okay, now, let's see. Different spirit as to, you know, just, you know, the tree's vertical, all right? Okay, now this is my quote stamp, and let's see, let's use this side. I sure like the look of this piece, though. Um, okay. Let's do this one in black as well. Now, if I was laying it down against, um, you know, a super blue sky or something like that, you could but Potentially, I don't know with the vellum, it, even if it was like a black background, it might be too light, you know, once you put the vellum on top of it for something to show up in white 
or, or, or a different color. So I don't know. Okay, so let's see. I'm going a little bit. I don't want to go center with this. I want to go a little bit higher because this is, you know, kind of the focal point of the scene. Maybe I'll put some birds in here as well just to keep things a little bit more interesting. But Okay, autumn is the second spring when every leaf is a flower. Okay, now we're going to add in some embellishment to this, but that, I don't know, just that alone looks pretty cool. Okay, and let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, let me grab a couple birds for this one, and I'll have them flying around in here. Or one, I'm not sure. Or, let's see, I have an eagle right here. Okay. This eagle is a little bit bigger than these trees, so I can put one eagle in front of a tree. Maybe I can have another one up there, too. Let me see here. That might be a little bit too big. You know, I do have a smaller version on my uh, moon's plate. Let me grab, let, let me grab those. go. No, they're, they're on a different plate. <laughs> Pausing vid. Okay, they're on my um, Sky Figures plate. Deep, uh, kind of deep space figures. Okay, so let's see here. This, this one's the clean version. Let's see. Let me put one. Yeah, this will be the perfect size, I think. Okay, so... one right here. And you're stamping little tiny um, stamps, images. Make sure that you don't use the same impression pressure that you did it on your larger stamps, okay? You don't want your really small images to, um, you know, to be squashed. And this one right here is really, really tiny, okay? All right, so what I'm going to do, um, this one on this uh, deep sky plate, come in kind of different directions. So I'm, what I want to do is I'm going to stamp one over my little fingerprint blotch too, if I can get it. But um, I'll have one of these. You will see it's kind of flying that way, and this one's kind of flying that way. So there's kind of this circling type of pattern. They're not vultures or anything like that, but um, it kind of reiterates this um, kind of visual pathway that you uh, that we're creating here in this um, in the you know the scenario. Everything's around in a circle, so things are just that's the natural movement um, for someone that's looking at this piece. It's going like this, you know. A lot of times we're going from you know, front to back, or, you know, we'll land on some kind of figure in there. But um, this one, it's a circular pattern right here as far as the visual pathway that um, our viewers would be uh, following. So you do these little things like this, you know, this is a little thing. It's that eagle's going this way, this one's going that way. I mean, it wouldn't be, it's not incorrect if you had this one down here and they're both going like that. They'd kind of be both kind of going up into that um, quote there, which is kind of the you know, the, the focal point of the piece. This piece right here would look just great on a piece of white paper, too, I think. Huh. Okay, so we're going to heat set this.
Now, not all of that dye-based ink um, dried, but I think we can do what we're going to do right now on semi-damp. Now, the brilliant ink dried, no problem. I can tell when the brilliant ink dries because it um, it kind of flattens out from kind of a darker glossy to kind of a more of a matte um, type of finish. It's almost, you can watch it tr kind of transform almost like you can see kind of embossing transform. Okay, so let's hit this with some of these pens. I don't know if these pens are going to be, I don't know, too large for some of these uh, smaller kind of applications here, but um, I don't think I will I'll go quite as bold as I do um, you know, on this type of uh, scenario here. So let's just kind of add it and see how it goes, okay? Now, this um, paint is not just to kind of make, or hopefully make, the, the tree kind of uh, lighting shimmer a little bit more but it'll provide a little bit of opacity um, for the application of this over, you know, kind of darker areas, meaning, you know, the photograph here, okay? But yeah, I don't know. I might have to do this one just on white paper, too. This looks pretty good. Or, you know, like on glossy. Okay, now this um, ink right here, it looks like it's roughly the same color as this light green impression, but that, that's fine. Um, it's not a lost cause. Like I said, it's, it's adding a little bit of opacity into the mix from, from transparent translucency, okay? Transparent is the, are the dye-based inks, and the translucent aspect is the, uh, the vellum, you know. So, uh, it gives it a different look, especially when we layer it. Okay. All right, I think that is about all we need there. The yellow is going to, yeah, it contrasts against that green quite a bit. But if you watch my other videos, these pens do tend to, they'll blend in. They stand out more when they're wet and freshly applied um, than when they dry. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why. Uh, the water or the binder and it just tends to be uh, quite a bit less um, opaque. It's good and bad. Sometimes you want a little bit of pop, but on the other hand, sometimes when you add it into something like this, this type of scenario, um, this stands out too much. And then, but when it dries, it blends in really nicely, okay? So it merges and, you know, I guess it harmonizes with the surface in which it's been applied. Okay, so... Adding yellow into it. It's going to, you know, it's starting to pick up that kind of that shimmering type of look that we're going after, you know, when we're thinking about aspen trees. Um, that lighting on them, it's... Especially when they're backlit like this, you know, and you're looking up at the sky at them, you know. I've kind of seen them from a distance. We're seeing the reflected light um, kind of reflecting back at you, but when you're underneath them and that light is coming through them, it is a whole different experience. I wish I could kind of 
go hiking amongst them, you know, every fall. Up in California, the, the Sierras, there's, you know, kind of a lot of Aspen. There's this one lake called Lake Sabrina. And kind of at the beginning of this one hike that I did, um, you're walking, you know, underneath them. It's kind of one of the more exciting parts of the hike, and it was right in the beginning. Okay, so there is that yellow. Show you the uh, shimmer that it's is right there. See that? There we go. See that right there? Hopefully, you can see those little textural differences in there. I don't want to lose any of this. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking to myself right now. I don't want to cut any of this thing off, you know, from pasting it on that photo, but but I do want to see what that looks like. Okay, this is white, and it'll provide a little bit more contrast, but again, this is going to really blend in to that background, so it won't look as white as it looks right now, but yeah, so be it. I could, I could spray seal this, and that tends to help a little bit, and then, you know, apply the white over that. But this represents kind of, you know, white light uh, reflecting off, you know, the leaves. So we have the uh, white light of the, uh, you know, the, the photograph scenario. If it was a sunset or something like that, I wouldn't put white over this, okay? I would keep the lighting more um, warm, uh, reflecting, you know, the colors of the sky. Okay, so I think that should do it. This is pretty, uh, you know, this is a pretty quick scene here. Um, we need to paste this on top of there, like so. And then we need to trim the base of it and trim the side, okay? But, let's see. What I'll do, sometimes I forget about this whole thing, and I spray the back side of this with a spray adhesive, but we'll spray adhesive this front side right here. Bring it in here, and then we'll um, adhere this to this, and that should be, uh, um, I don't know, the card should almost be complete. Okay, we have our spray adhesive on here. If you haven't watched the other videos, you can see it kind of sprayed over this. Now, I watched a video um, where someone just kind of took some um, standard, you know, crafting glue and applied it with a sponge, you know, kind of in a light even coat um, to whatever they were, uh, you know, their vellum, and uh, it worked out really well. Okay, so you can do something like that too if you don't have a spray adhesive. Spray adhesives were pretty good um, just in terms of, uh, you know, the expeditious you know, fashion, you know, just you spray it on. And one of the things about it is, you know, you have to be kind of conscious of uh, the amount that you use, I'm finding. Otherwise, you can cut, might get those little... I'm getting it a little bit here where, you know, there's a little bit too thick of a dot, a beaded kind of application of it. And it will show through the vellum a little bit. It's showing through a little bit right there. Okay, so um, let's see here. Because this didn't match up completely, I have to be careful about... Um, you know, I can't put something over this and just brayer over it. So I think what I'll do right here is I'll just trim this excess amount off right here. And I have a little bit right here. Okay, so just a straight edge. And um, like that. And just make several passes. Yeah, I didn't get it. <laughs> I think I'm in a groove right here on my cutting mat.
Okay, there we go. Okay, toss this out. And then, let's see. This side, that one, this came out pretty good. I really like this. I, I really like the uh, um, this vantage point. I'm um, doing these trees this way. I, I'm, I'm talking about those trees. In all right, I'm I'm stuck in a groove on my mat here. Okay, yeah, but this vantage point makes um, certain things really dynamic. I like to do it with the birch trees, but the birch trees are just too vertical, and they don't have like an end point. Um, they're just kind of trunks. <laughs> but these ones have the uh, the tip of the tree, the top of the tree. Okay, so this thing right here, let's go. Here, let's put this piece of paper down like that. And let's come out this bottom portion. I hate to lose any of the composition because. You know, sometimes you, you start doing your pieces and you just don't want to lose any of it. But, in the name of stamp science and experimentation, that's what we're going to do. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good like that. And um, what we'll do is we'll take this and... Uh, just kind of brayer this. I'm going to brayer it lightly. You do get a little bit of a kind of these little bubbles occasionally, okay, when doing this type of process. So, um, and especially when I did a dual layer piece, um, that one, um, there was like a little ridge. So you just kind of have to, you have to kind of bump it down and work it out. Yeah, like there's one right here, okay. So, I'm just going like this, and just kind of, while that spray adhesive is still wet, you can just kind of work it out like that. Okay, let's see, let me test it. <laughs> yeah, it's right around in here. It might be where um, the dye base inks were a little bit more um, pronounced, maybe like a larger application of it, or I used a lot more of the dye base inks on that um, stamp impression. So, you know, making the, uh, the vellum a little bit more um, kind of wobbly, you know, just because you've applied more ink there. Okay, now here I did get that kind of that green fingerprint stain over here, so you know with the vellum you can just scratch it right off. You really can't tell where you scratched away either, as far as, you know, as far as I can tell. So the vellum, it tends to be a pretty forgiving medium because there's different things you can do with it. And uh, I don't know, it just seems to work out. <laughs> you know, it, it obscures, you know, the, the, the ability to obscure something by laying something over something, you know, one another is... <laughs> it's a pretty powerful um, ability when it comes to you know stamping. Okay, let's see here. Let's see if this will. You know. I'm going to let, let let me use a little bit of a better piece of paper than that. Um, uh, let's see, you know. I have a uh, this is a piece of um, kind of a little bit of a slightly iridescent white paper. Okay, it's not going to match because this isn't exactly for you know four and a half, uh, four and a quarter by five and a half. But um, what I'll do is I'll use some. I can go out outside and spray seal, uh, spray mount that again, but oh, I was looking to see if I have some photo squares somewhere. I might have ran out. Oh, I know. Let me just use some crafter's tape here. Oh, here it is right here. My 
desktop is, uh, my desktop's crazy right now. A lot of experimenting lately with stamps and media. Uh, checking for surface compatibility and uh, opacity. It kind of gets, it's fun to do that. It's kind of addictive, but, uh, man, I, I really need to uh, tidy up my uh, working area. Okay, so that's down there. So, flatten out again. Okay. I wasn't going to format this, but we might as well. Okay, so on this, I'm just eyeballing it. It's already, this this piece isn't completely square, but um, for me, it'll be close enough. <laughs> I don't really worry about that type of thing. I don't want it like, you know, super off, but if it's a little bit off, I don't, I don't worry about that type of thing. Okay, so there's something like that. It's a little bit thin up here towards the top. And this is just a piece of uh, you know, blue star dream. I think that's a, I think the blue star dream would be a good one for this. Okay. I do my cross thing when I do this X right here. It reminds me of uh, a high school yearbook class doing those crosses like that to represent a photo area. Way back in the day, that's back when we'd send out um, you know, these paste ups. These days, everything's. Well, not these days, probably over the last, I don't know, 20 years, it's all been probably digital submissions. Uh, okay, let's see. But I do love the old style of paste up and doing things kind of, you know, hand done. Not that, they, you know, I'd want things to change back. You know, I do things digitally too, but there is something to that for sure. Just the feel of things. All right, so almost there. <laughs> this one's really long here, so I'm kind of taking a little bit of extra time. I put a little bit more space at the base of the, uh, the mat. And like I said, this thing's off. But for me, it'll be close enough. Okay. All right, there's a little bit of that, um, you know, I'm getting used, to, I haven't been spray sealing things, you know, I only started doing it with this uh, vellum, but, you know, you get a little bit of that showing through like that there, that texturing. Okay, my nozzle's all clogged up too, I need to uh, clean that off, but I haven't gotten around to it because I've been lazy, but anyways, um, let me show you, see that little area in there, there's little specks, okay. And ideally, that wouldn't be there, but this is viewing something at arm's distance, and I just don't think that's, you know, bad to have that in there. Noticeable for me, yeah, but I'm not really looking for that type of thing. There's a little bit more white. Just to build up a little bit more kind of contrast, if you want. I could use some, uh, if I wanted to, I can put, you know, apply some um, uh, pigment ink in here around those clouds and the vellum, I, but I just don't think it nearly needs it. This piece really came together pretty fast. I like my application of the paint on this one. Um, sometimes I get a little bit, uh, you know, I don't know, carried away and crazy with the, uh, the amount of paint that I've been doing on these trees. And it's kind of addictive. It's 
like the zen of uh, foliation or something like that. But here's a piece right here. I think it's pretty dynamic. I really like this kind of this you know circular pattern of the uh, these trees, which I've never thought to do before. I've been doing it with usually with pine trees or something like that. But um, the leafless limbs do provide a little bit of a I don't know kind of a visual weight to it. I mean, if you can imagine this piece without these, I think it would look okay, but I think these things really kind of anchor things in and give it some extra depth, as well as um, kind of perspective in terms of that vanishing point right in here. See how these all go to that same rough point. I'm not putting a roller in there and, you know, point, you know, making sure that it's exactly, you know, going to that center point, but... Um, I don't know. It's good enough, I think. Okay, so anyways, thanks for watching the video. Thanks for tuning into the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the uh, comments section. We'd love to hear from you. All right. Um, lie on your back and look at the uh, look at the sky. <laughs> There's this other one that says, I think, lie on your back and look at the stars be a good quote for that in a nighttime scenario, but this one's more like high noon. <laughs>